<laughs> okay, so the video decided to turn off while I was recording, so that's why this chapter is separate. So we are reading chapter 24 right now. Wait, okay, here. And boom. Chapter 24. Me and the preacher started walking and calling when Dixie's name. I was glad it was raining so hard because it made it easy to cry. I cried and cried and cried all and the whole time I was calling for when Dixie. Can you guys imagine calling someone and you're crying at the same time? That's what she's going through right now. When Dixie! I screamed. When Dixie! The preacher shouted. And then he whistled loud and long. But when Dixie didn't show up, we walked all through downtown. We walked past the Dewberry's house and the Herman W. Block Memorial Library and Sweetie Pie's yellow house and Gertrude's pets. We walked out to the Friendly Corners trailer park and looked underneath our trailer. We walked all the way out to the Open Arms Baptist Church of Naomi. We walked past the railroad tracks and right on down Highway 50. Cars were rushing past us and their taillights glowed red like mean eyes staring at us. Daddy, I said, Daddy, what if he got run over? Opal, the preacher said, we can't worry about what might have happened. All we can do is keep looking. We walked and walked. And in my head, I started on a list of 10 things that I knew about when Dixie, things I could write on big old posters and put up around the neighborhood, things that would help people look for him. Number one, was that he had a pathological fear of thunderstorms. Number two, was he liked to smile using all his teeth. Number three, was he could run fast. Number four, was that he snored. Number five, was that he could catch mice without squishing them to death. Number six, was he liked to meet people. Number seven, was he liked to eat peanut butter. Number eight was he couldn't stand to be left alone. Number nine was he liked to sit on couches and sleep in beds. Number 10 was he didn't mind going to church. I kept on going over and over the list in my head. I memorized it the same way I had memorized the list of 10 things about my mama. I memorized it so if I didn't find him, I would have some part of him to hold on to. But at the same time, I thought of something I had never thought of before. And that was that a list of things couldn't even begin to show somebody the real Winn-Dixie, just like a list of 10 things couldn't ever get me to know my mama. And thinking about that made me cry even more. Me and the preacher looked for a long time. And finally, he said we had to quit. But, but daddy, I said, when Dixie's out there somewhere, we can't leave him. Opal, the preacher said, we have looked and looked and there's only so much looking we can do. I can't believe you're going to give up, I told him. India, Opal, the preacher said, rubbing his nose, don't argue with me. I stood and stared at him. The rain had let up some. It was mostly a drizzle now. It's time to head back, the preacher said. No, I told him. You go ahead and go, but I'm going to keep looking. Opal, the preacher said in a real soft voice. It's time to give up. You always give up, I shouted. You're always pulling your head inside your stupid old turtle shell. I bet you didn't even go out looking for my mama when she left. I bet you just let her run off too. Maybe, the preacher said. I, I couldn't stop her. I tried. Don't you think I wanted her to stay too? Don't you think I miss her every day? He spread his arms out wide and then dropped them to his sides. I tried, he said. I tried. Then he did something I couldn't believe. 
he started to cry. The preacher was crying. His shoulders were moving up and down, and he was making snuffly noises. <laughs> and don't believe that losing when Dixie doesn't upset me as much as it does you, he said. I love that dog. I love him, too. Daddy, I said. I went and wrapped my arms around his waist. He was crying so hard he was shaking. It's all right, I told him. It's okay. Shh, I said to him like he was a scared little kid. Everything will be okay. We stood there hugging and rocking back and forth. And after a while, the preacher stopped shaking and I still held on to him. And I finally got the nerve to ask the question I wanted to ask. Do you think she's ever going to come back? I whispered. No, the preacher said. No, I do not. I've hoped and prayed and dreamed about it for years, but I don't think she'll ever come back. Gloria says that you can't hold on to anything, that you can only love what you've got while you've got it. She's right, the preacher said. Gloria Dump is right. I'm not ready to let Winn Dixie go, I said. I had forgotten about him for a minute, what with thinking about my mama. We'll keep looking, said the preacher. The two of us will keep looking for him. But do you know what? I just realized something, India Opal. When I told you, your mama took everything with her. I forgot one thing, one very important thing that she left behind. What? I asked. You, he said. Thank God your mama left me you. And he hugged me tighter. I'm glad I've got you too, I told him. And I meant it. I took hold of his hand and we started walking back into town, calling and whistling for Winn Dixie the whole way. All right, you guys, that was definitely some intense reading in this chapter. Just now a lot went down. But I want us to turn and talk about what we think is going to happen next in this book. The book is almost over, by the way, but I want us to turn and talk about what we think is gonna happen next. I'm gonna pause the video now. Thanks for pausing the video, Anna. Friends, thank you so much for participating in the read aloud today. I really hope that you guys are comprehending what's going on and that you're enjoying reading the book as I'm enjoying reading it to you. So I will literally see you guys in a few minutes. Later, friends.